One of the two is gonna have to go backwards. So this statement in and of itself is not an absolute, which is why it's a flawed statement. You can't take yourself too serious. Right. You know what I mean, the world will turn on you if you take yourself too serious. Who the hell am I to take myself too serious? Made all this money, got this reputation, and now I'm looking at people screw facing them down. Right. I have a great life. How am I going to be mad at somebody? Really, when you think about it. Mike Tyson has just revealed why his fight with Jake Paul appears to be getting canceled after the failed test. Meanwhile, a surprising throwback video featuring Tyson has come to light. In the footage, Tyson engages in a lively conversation with Jimmy Kimmel, delving into Jake Paul's emergence and influence within the boxing sphere. Paul, he keeps saying he wants to fight you. Do you want to fight him? That could be very interesting. It could be interesting. <laughs> I never took it really serious, but yeah, that could be really interesting. In addition, Kimmel is seen questioning Tyson about whether he believes Jake Paul possesses enough skill to make a potential match something Tyson might consider. Tyson responded affirmatively, acknowledging that Paul has sufficient skill and confirmed that he recognizes Paul's competence. You think he, that he is skilled enough to make it uh, something that you might actually want to do? He's skilled enough, yes, I'm gonna give it to him, he's skilled enough, because he's winning. Tyson argues that Paul's success stems from his ability to consistently defeat opponents who are perceived as less skilled. With that being stated, Tyson believes that these boxers ought to have triumphed over the problem child at the very least. In other words, he's nurturing fighters who, initially, shouldn't have been capable of defeating him. Tyson said that Paul is beating people that he really should not be beating. Huh? You gotta, you gotta, even if he's fighting guys and your guys don't believe a good enough fighter, they should be able to beat him. Right. Right, but they can't. Right. So he's beating people who really, he shouldn't really be beating. That's, we gotta give him that credit. He's beating people that he really should not be beating. Right. In addition, Tyson explained his reasoning, stating that Jake Paul is significantly benefiting boxing. He highlighted that Paul, with a following of 70 million people tuning in for his fights, surpasses the audience that even world champions manage to gather. Tyson emphasized the remarkable impact Paul is having on boxing, arguing that it is sensational and that no one should criticize it. And um, he's doing good, man. For a guy that just, he's just doing it and, you know, this is good. And he's doing, and he's, he's doing so much good for boxing. This is, listen, this guy got 70, 70 uh, million people following him every time he fights. Right, yeah. Have, the champions in the world don't have that many people following him. So what he's doing to boxing is just sensational. No one should be hating on that. They should just care. Let's just fight him. On the other hand, Mams Taylor, the manager of KSI, a prominent YouTuber turned boxer, recently offered his insights into the prospect of Mike Tyson returning to face Jake Paul in the ring. Taylor's perspective sheds light on the opinions circulating within the boxing community, particularly among those with a vested interest in the sport's crossover appeal. I hope, I wish him well. I hope he doesn't get hurt. He's an older guy. He's a, a very tough older guy. But, um, yeah, it's not an ideal sort of way for him to go out unless he somehow knocks out Jake in the first round or something, you know, but... Taylor expressed reservations about the matchup, particularly with regard to Tyson's well-being. He emphasized the physical toll that boxing takes on the body, especially for someone like Tyson, who has endured years of punishment inside the ring. Taylor's concerns reflect a broader sentiment within the boxing community regarding the risks associated with older fighters returning to competition. And when you've got youth on your side and Jake trains hard, he's not just a YouTuber, you know? KSI is not just a YouTuber. They, they when they box, they they put in a lot of work. These guys. Boxing legend Roy Jones Jr. has also given his verdict on the fight between Tyson and Paul. Jones Jr. has officially thrown his hat into the ring, asserting that the impending bout spells trouble for a specific contender. He told the Lunch Club, "If it's a fight, it's very intriguing how it may turn out because Jake Paul has gotten a lot better as a boxer over the days. But Mike Tyson, even at 58 or however old he is, is still Mike Tyson. When I boxed him, he still punched." like Mike Tyson. Jones Jr. contributed by saying that if Paul manages to land a punch squarely on anyone's chin, it would pose a problem, regardless of who the opponent might be. He expressed his fondness for Paul, acknowledging him as a good person and commending his accomplishments in boxing. He added, if he hits anybody square on the chin, it's going to be problematic. I don't care who it is. I like Jake Paul. He's a good guy, and he's doing good with his boxing stuff. Roy Jones Jr. mentioned that he sees the fight as a beneficial promotional opportunity for both fighters. He anticipated that they would achieve impressive viewership figures, especially since the event had escalated to the status
status of a legitimate fight. Jones Jr. added, I think it's a good promotional situation for him and Mike. They should do really good numbers, especially having upgraded to a real fight. If Mike comes out and does what Mike normally does, then it's going to be a tough situation for Jake. Moreover, Jones Jr. conveyed that Paul would stand a chance if he managed to evade Mike Tyson for four or five rounds. He expressed, if Jake can stay away from him for four or five rounds, then Jake has a chance. But he's going to have to do a lot of maneuvering to stay away from him. Jake Paul, with 10 bouts to his credit, seems overly confident, as if he's immune to a blow from Mike Tyson. He's eagerly pushing for a match on July 20th, boasting about his durability. However, he's yet to experience the sheer force, packed in Tyson's punches. Recently, Paul couldn't resist boasting about his formidable chin, claiming it can weather any punch thrown his way. This is what he said, I want to see how hard he hits, Mike. I really want to see, bro. Let's see all the legends, the myths, because you're Iron Mike Tyson. But I have an iron chin. People know that. I take shots. Confident in his ability to emerge from the upcoming fight unscathed, Paul exuded a sense of invincibility. Against all rationality, Paul has deluded himself into believing he possesses the fortitude to endure blows from the legendary Iron Mike. Despite the overwhelming concern from those around him, for his safety, the renowned YouTuber remains resolute in his desire to experience firsthand the force of Mike's punches. He added, I think people are underestimating me for being able to deal with his power, and that's something that's going to make it interesting. I am biting off a lot. This is definitely the toughest, most savage, lethal opponent regardless of age, because power is the last thing to go. Meanwhile, criticism rains down on heavyweight titan Tyson Fury for his endorsement of the Paul vs. Tyson bout as beneficial for the sport of boxing. Fury wasn't among those criticizing the fight as he told the stomping ground. You know, I think it's fantastic for boxing. Um, you know, you've got a legend in Mike Tyson. You've got a, a YouTube boxer who's come into the game and blew it up and he's got millions of followers and millions of views and millions of eyes. Good, bad or indifferent. Some people love him, some people hate him. Moreover, Fury highlighted that both fighters stand to earn a considerable amount of money from the event. He added, listen, who am I to say, oh, Mike Tyson shouldn't be boxing or Jake Paul shouldn't be boxing. Good luck to him. They're both going to make what I call a sh ton of money out of it. However, Fury's comments didn't sit well with fellow British boxing legend Carl Froch, who has previously expressed his distaste for Paul's crossover from internet fame to boxing. Frox said of the fight to instant casinos, it's not good for boxing. For Tyson Fury to say that it's good for boxing, he needs to look in the mirror. Have a look at what he's done. Have a look at what professional fighters do. Frox commented on the situation, reflecting on the rigorous challenges boxers face, and then critiqued Jake Paul's decision to fight with Mike Tyson by labeling Paul as a performing clown. Frox added, look what they go through, and then think to himself, this is Jake Paul, a performing clown jumping in there with a 57-year-old man who is a legend and an icon in professional boxing. He's an absolute f***ing idiot for fighting Mike Tyson. It's wrong. It should be stopped. Froch expressed his hope that Tyson would quickly overwhelm Jake Paul in the ring, delivering a performance that honors the sport of boxing. He criticized Paul for his disrespectful behavior during the build-up to the fight, including actions that mimicked Mike Tyson, such as biting ears. Froch added, Jake Paul's been dead disrespectful as well in his build-up. He's been biting ears off and trying to mimic Mike Tyson and copy him. I just don't find it funny. If he had any b****, about him, he'd fight me, wouldn't he? I'd love to punch his teeth down the back of his throat. Now, let's come to the breaking news. So several reports are now suggesting that Tyson's fight with Jake Paul could be canceled if he fails an unusual test in the fight rules. Both contenders are advocating for the match to be elevated to a professional level showdown. Nonetheless, the ultimate verdict lies in the hands of the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. The Sun has reported that the TLDR could also cancel the fight if Tyson fails one of their pre-fight tests. Under their rules, fight Fighters over the age of 38 must submit favorable electroencephalogram and electrocardiogram results. In just four months, Tyson will step into the ring in Texas at the age of 58. The EEG serves to assess fighters for any brain irregularities, while the EKG is instrumental in identifying heart issues. TDLR communications manager Telemange also told USA Today Sports, We can also request additional testing if we think it's appropriate. Despite Tyson's success in the tests, the match might still be categorized as an exhibition bout. In this instance, Tyson and Paul will don 16-ounce gloves, departing from the standard 10-ounce gloves, typically worn in professional matches. The altercation will feature rounds lasting two minutes instead of the conventional three-minute duration. While these reports of the fight getting canceled are dominating the internet, fans have also started to raise doubts on the prospects of the fight. For instance, this fan said, just found out about Paul trying to cancel the fight with Tyson. Don't blame him, honestly. He was gonna get his shit rocked. Another added, seriously though, how are we not boycotting Netflix? They are literally platforming forming a fight between Jake Paul and a 60-year-old Mike
Mike Tyson's with health issues. Enough is enough. Let's all cancel our Netflix subscriptions. Meanwhile, one fan raised doubts about why Tyson hasn't shared more footage of his training after the first four days. The fan said, man, Mike Tyson was training for four days in a row and now he's missing. Poor man is in bed rest for two weeks. Nasty work by Jake Paul for taking that fight. While fans like them have started to raise concerns about whether Tyson is still training for the upcoming fight, we have recently received confirmation from his wife about it. UFC President Dana White seems to have alleviated his concerns regarding the impending matchup. After expressing his initial disapproval, White seemed to have a change of heart after a discussion with Tyson's spouse. She reassured him about Tyson's unwavering commitment to preparing for the upcoming match, leading White to reconsider his stance. I'm, I'm not a fan of anybody fighting at, at our age, um, but he's a grown man, obviously, and, you know, he's, he's going to do what he's going to do, but I, I, at least I know. I talked to... Uh, I talked to his wife a couple days ago, and he's taking this serious, and he's training for it. And Although White maintained some concerns regarding Tyson's comeback to the ring given his age, he conceded to Tyson's independence in determining his path forward. I love Mike Tyson, and I'm not a fan of anybody fighting at our age, but he's a grown man, obviously, and he's going to do what he's going to do, White conceded during an appearance on Lex Fridman's podcast. Moreover, White commended Tyson's exceptional talent for generating revenue beyond the confines of boxing, showing slight astonishment regarding his choice to participate in a prominent match Match, considering his thriving financial ventures elsewhere. He said, I think Mike Tyson is one of the most unique guys who have crossed over. Any of the other fighters from his generation have no way of making money without fighting, and Mike Tyson has made a lot of money outside of fighting. However, former UFC contender Chael Sonnen has cast uncertainty over the potential match, citing the significant age difference between Tyson and his adversary, Jake Paul. UFC bantamweight title holder Sean O'Malley's mentor, Tim Welch, alongside Joe Diesel Riggs, chimed in on the anticipated comeback of Tyson. However, amidst their discussion, skepticism arose regarding the authenticity of Tyson's training footage shared online. If I was a betting man, I'd actually bet on Jake Paul. Um, <clears throat> well, he's 50. I mean, Mike's 57, dude. Yeah. How many rounds is it going to be? Mm. Eight, I believe. <laughs> There's something in, the, in the, the thing where, where Jake, Jake can wear headgear, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think they're going to wear headgear. If no. they wear headgear, that's going to be like, what the so Seriously, they're, they're wearing headgear. They're going to spar on Netflix. It's and like, they they put they they put out like a you know like like, like just different videos of Mike uh, working out and stuff, and uh, and. He's, he looks he looks good. I mean. Amidst the marathon podcast session, Welch casually prodded Riggs with a question about the impending showdown between Paul and Tyson. Riggs, without hesitation, declared his hypothetical bet on Paul over the seasoned Tyson, if he were indeed a betting man. Welch, nodding in agreement, pointed out Tyson's advanced age of 57, suggesting that despite his legendary status in his prime, time might have caught up with him. The bout, scheduled for eight rounds, also raised concerns, as neither fighter was expected to don headgear, adding an extra layer of intensity to the impending clash. Like, 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 just different videos of Mike uh, working out and stuff. And, uh, and he's, he looks, he looks good. I mean, I mean, he's, I mean, but how easy is it to do like, all right, give me your hardest sure. one, two, three, roll under three, two, and I'm going to cut it. And then we're going to keep adding to yeah, it. Yeah, you, you can, you can film for, you know, like anybody work out here that knows, knows, knows something and then just to film for 20 minutes and, and then put together a two minute video that makes him look like a star, you know? Diesel remarked on the various videos showcasing Mike Tyson's training, noting that Tyson appeared impressive in them. However, Welch pointed out that these videos could be manipulated to highlight only the most favorable moments. He elaborated on the ease of selecting the best segments, such as Tyson's most powerful combinations, and then editing them together. 230. Mike, yeah, he, he's got to get down uh, below 200. He's got one of those guts that are abs. The, the the growth hormone gut is that what that is yeah he looks stacked hopefully he can get on a little special supplements oh for sure i mean he's an old bird i mean he, he, there's no way his his testosterone's any anywhere near jake's and that's the big fucking the, the big if the dude well it's not fair if, if his 57 he's had his main concussion diesel expanded on this explaining that anyone familiar with working out could record a lengthy session and edit it down to a brief video that portrays them in an exceptionally positive light much like making someone look like a star based on their discussion it seems likely that the videos will be manipulated to portray tyson as poised for combat showcasing him at the peak of his strength this revelation sparked a whirlwind of discussion among enthusiasts after tyson shared his training videos chael sonnen 
a 46-year-old former MMA fighter, chimed in with his reservations. Uncle Chael wrote in his typical fashion, In the future, if you're ever going to spend five seconds hitting mitts as a way of making the audience believe, you're doing a training session, make sure you splash water on your face and t-shirt first. Meanwhile, Colby Covington, a seasoned contender for UFC titles, has recently voiced his opinions, and he didn't hold back in his criticism. He insinuated that Paul and his entourage might have manipulated the outcomes of his victories, casting doubt on the legitimacy of Paul's professional record. Speaking during an appearance on SauceCast, Covington admitted, I don't like the fight. Jake's in his mid-twenties. He's doing every chemical known to man. He's literally a lab project. Paul's team are just juicing him, so I think it's gonna end badly. Jake's gonna knock him out within the first two minutes. Additionally, Covington raised concerns about the authenticity of Tyson's recent sparring footage, adding another layer of skepticism to the upcoming clash. He remains skeptical amidst the buzz, suggesting that the sparring clips attributed to Tyson were cleverly manipulated by his social media team. He said, That footage is not recent footage. I can promise you Tyson's camp had that footage a couple of years ago. That's not the current Mike Tyson. I was on a flight to Vegas with him a few weeks ago. Sweetest guy in the world. But that's not how he looks now. And that's not how he's hitting pads. It's yet uncertain whether Covington's suspicions regarding Tyson's training footage hold water. But he didn't stop there with his conspiracy theories. The Miami-based grappler suggested that Paul's entire professional boxing career has been built on allegedly rigged matches. He added, All of Jake Paul's accomplishments have been rigged. He fought the shortest guy in the NBA to start his career, Nate Robinson. He had like a 70 pounds weight advantage. You think you are tough because of that? You are not tough. You are just a bully. The second fight, there is a hand signal, and Woodley puts his hand out, then knocks him out. It is a freak show. On the contrary, Frank Stallone, sibling to the Hollywood luminary Sylvester Stallone, joined the chorus of voices discussing the upcoming match. Despite concerns raised by some, he, like many others, remains steadfast in his belief that Iron Mike will emerge victorious against his considerably younger opponent. On his Instagram feed, the multifaceted artist encapsulated the anticipated finale of the bout. According to his post, a swift one-two punch combo could seal the deal. His caption read, Mike Tyson wins by KO on two. Kids green and right hand crazy. Left hook nullifies that. And bingo. In the video clip provided, he can be seen stationed in a parking lot, unveiling the influx of emails he's received concerning the July brawl. Frank Stallone initially attempted to contextualize the situation by dubbing Jake Paul a novice in comparison. His initial encounter with a seasoned boxer occurred during his confrontation with Tommy Fury. Here is what he said. Okay, I've been getting bombarded by emails about the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight. Let me make it very clear. Jake Paul is a rank amateur. The first time he fought a guy that was a bit of a boxer, he lost with Tyson Fury's brother. Here's the situation. Most young fighters like that, and he's not young, he's actually too old to start fighting. Most guys start at seven. They're all right hand crazy. Everyone's right hand crazy. Mike Tyson, what's his best punch? Left hook to the body, left hook to the chin. Well, Mike can punch with both hands. And you see a week in how fast and how strong he is, how he moves his head. Once you throw that right hand, you're extended, he comes under, bang! Left hook, and this kid has never been hit by a guy that hits like Mike Tyson. Okay, I've seen Mike fight, I've been around him, I was there when he won his title. He's fast, he get hit hard. Yeah, he's 57, but he knows how to gauge himself, you know? It's like this young guy, they're gonna come out, he's gonna be nervous. Mike's gonna have to be as nervous. He's gonna come in like this, this guy's gonna throw a right hand, bang! And he's gonna catch him with the shot, and that's gonna be it. Or he's gonna feel that power here on the arms. Because Mike knows how to take his time and pace. So you keep an eye out, and you remember you heard it first from Frankster Gangster. Now, Dalton Smith has shared his reflections on the bout, expressing his hope that future matches will prioritize entertainment above all else. Smith said, Money talks at the end of the day. If it makes money, it makes sense as they say. But Tyson is now really old. We saw that against Roy Jones Jr. in that exhibition. Smith mentioned that given Paul's youth and freshness, the matchup does not appeal to him at all. He expressed a preference for the fight to be scripted, suggesting that a predetermined outcome would be more palatable. The idea of Tyson being knocked out by Paul is something he particularly disliked liked and hoped to avoid. He added, Paul is younger and fresher, so for me it is not to my taste at all. I'd like to think it is scripted to be honest. It would be better if it was scripted. I'd hate to see Mike Tyson go in there and get knocked out by Jake Paul. Smith stated that in his prime, Paul wouldn't have been considered capable enough even to carry Tyson's spit bucket, emphasizing how far apart their skill levels were. However, he acknowledged that ultimately, financial incentives play a significant role in arranging such matches. He expressed, back in his prime years, Paul wouldn't have been able to carry his spit bucket, but unfortunately, 
Ultimately, money talks at the end of the day. As the boxing community and fans worldwide await further developments, the debate continues over the implications of such matches for the sport's integrity, the safety of its participants, and the future of entertainment and athletics. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.